Hi guys! So happy to see you there! Today I want to show you how to make an Edwardian blouse. It is a step-by-step -step tutorial and after watching this video you will be able not only to make similar blouses, but to use the same techniques in making other types of garments. For making such blouse you need 1 meter 80 centimeters of light material and I recommend you to use cotton batiste or any other thin cotton fabric. You will also need 9 meters of cotton lace with different patterns, 8 small buttons and elastic tape the same length as your waist. I'm placing the pattern on the fabric and cutting all the pieces. As I'm working with white fabric I don't want to leave any marks on the material. That's why I made pattern with seam allowance in it. This way when I'm placing a piece of pattern on fabric I'm cutting the material exactly at the, as the pattern goes because I remember that I added one centimeters at every side for making a seam. The only exception is the lower part of the front and back panels because at that moment I wasn't sure how long the blouse should be so I added about 6 cm to have a chance to adjust the length if I decide to make it longer. Then the fun part begins. I have to figure out how the lace pieces should look like. In this step you are creating your own unique lace pattern that you will use later to make color, cuffs and upper part of the blouse. I am placing different lace tapes on every piece of pattern to find a composition that I like the most. I start working from connecting the parts of laces that will go to the upper front and back parts of the blouse. I'm just sewing everything together and here I have to make four similar parts. Here you can see me working on the front part, but I use the same technique for the back. For the front part you have to connect pieces at the center front and after that I'm checking if the lace piece is wide enough and if everything is okay, I can cut the shape I need. When you connected the pieces, you have to trim the excess of the lace. And we have a raw edge that has to be secured. How we can do this? Actually, there are a few ways, but I will tell you about my favorite one. It's simple, but look very clean. I make a bias tape from the same material I use for the blouse. It's thin and easy to iron. I'm sewing my tape on the raw edge and please remember to iron the seam first. For the back panel I use the same technique. I make a bias tape and secure the raw edge with it. As you can see, I don't pin the tape before attaching it, but if you are a beginner in sewing I highly recommend to do that. Ironing process is extremely important in making every type of garment, so be sure to iron all the seams. But ironing is not only about making a material flat, but also about creating a shape you need. Let me show you one interesting thing. Here you can see a pattern for color. It's not rectangular, it has a slightly curvy shape. Of course, I can make a small darts on a lace, but it will take a lot of time and I will ruin the pattern. But fortunately, there is another way. It's shaping the lace using an iron. As you can see, I'm creating a shape I need and then use iron to keep it in place. It's very important to, lay, uh, to let the lace to cool down so the shape will stay as you formed it. I use the same process for making a cuffs. After connecting all the lace tapes together and securing the raw edges, as I showed you before, you can iron it once again. Now you can connect the front and back lace piece together. 
I also used the bias tape to make the edges clean and invisible. When you are connecting all the pieces, please remember about checking the symmetry of the lace pattern, because in such places every mistake will be very visible. And now I'm attaching the collar. I'm making it without pinning, because I have a checking point, but I highly recommend you to pin the collar first and then make a seam. Then I'm adding a bias tape to hide the edge. So, let's work with the fabric. I take front and back parts and securing the upper edge by folding at the edge twice and making a seam. Then you have to make a French seam at the sides, connecting back panel with front panel. Pin wrong side together and make a seam leaving an about 5 mm seam allowance. Trim the seam allowance down to 2 mm, go to your ironing board, open the seam, right side of the fabric facing up, press the seam allowance to one side, on the right side of the fabric. Fold the fabric onto the seam, right side together. Press the seam flat. Then go to the sewing machine, pin the layers together along the pressed edge and make a seam. I know that my explanation isn't perfect, so if you don't understand how to make a French seam, please Google it, because there are plenty of step-by-step -step tutorials. This is the second Edwardian blouse that I'm making, and this time I choose white materials instead of ivory. Why? Because you have no idea how many shades of ivory are on the market and matching them is almost impossible. Every piece of lace was in slightly different color and I ended up with blouse in three different shades of ivory, which doesn't look very satisfying for me. <laughs> so my only advice is to use white fabric and lace. Now I'm making a seam using the widest stitch my machine can do, it's 5 mm. I'm making the seam at the upper part of the front panel, because front will have rufflings. It's really easy to make just pulling one of the threads. Then I'm pinning the lace color to the front and back details and sewing them together. Let's work on the sleeves. I made a cut at the bottom, without it it will be absolutely impossible to put your hand into the sleeve. The cut should be secured with the bias tape. If you are making it the first time in your life, 
make an experiment at small piece of the same fabric, pin the bias tape or even make a stitch by hand and then remove them after making a machine seam. Then I am making a French seam once again to create a slip. Please, iron the seam before sewing. I didn't make it on film because for me it was really really hard to run all the, all the time between the sewing machine and the ironing board while filming, but you definitely should do this. After that, secure the bottom part of the sleeve by folding the edge twice and making a seam. Then turn your sewing machine into option with the widest stitches and make another seam. Gather this part of the sleeve to the same length as the cuffs and only after that you can pin the cuff and sew it. You can use different types of tapes for making loops, but I made them from the same cotton I used for the blouse. Attach the buttons to the collar and cuffs. When I work with thin fabrics and I have to attach the sleeves, I use the same method as with the French seam. Here I have 1 cm of seam allowance and I'm pinning wrong side together 1 cm from the edge, but the seam will go 5 mm from the edge. After making a seam, trim the excess of fabric to 2 mm, turn the sleeve over and make another seam right where the seam allowance goes. It will be 5 mm from the edge. And you've done! You have a clear, nice seam. It's thin and it's the main reason why I prefer this way of attaching the sleeves over any other, but it will work only with thin fabrics. We're almost done! 
At that point, you should make a decision about the length of the blouse. Then trim the excess of the fabric at the lower edge and secure it by folding the edge twice. The last step is to sew an elastic. I am putting the blouse at my mannequin and measuring the, the desired length from the shoulder to the waistline, including the bust, of course. For me, it's 43 cm. But if I make a tunnel at this place, where my actual waist is, the blouse will be very fitted. And I want it to be loose, so I am adding from 6 to 7 cm to the length. And finally, I'm sewing the tunnel 50 cm under the shoulder measuring at the front. Please remember that you don't have bust at the back, so please repeat the same process at the back. For me, the back length measuring from the shoulder to the waistline is 40 cm, so the tape will be attached at 47 cm. I use pins to mark the desired waistline to know where the seam should be placed. And after that, I'm attaching the tunnel that I've made from the same cotton I used for the blouse. I'm putting the elastic inside and connect the edges together to make one continuous piece. Congratulations! We've done! Now you can enjoy your new blouse. <laughs> I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you and you learned something new today. Experiment with different types of lace and patterns. There are a lot of beautiful pictures of original blouses from the past with amazing colors, ruffles, sleeves. Now when you know how every step looks like, you can use the knowledge to design your own blouses. If you try to create something similar, please tag me on your pictures so I can see them. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below, I will be more than happy to answer. If you want to see more tutorials, please tell me what exactly you want to see next. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!